Neil. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Let me put my headphones on and see if we can... All right. All right. There we go. <laughs> I'm so excited to be speaking with you. Hey, it's great to speak to you too. How's things? Oh, uh, pretty good. I'm excited for tonight's episode of Stargirl. <laughs> yeah, I just saw the DC Universe version last night, so it's good. I wish I had the DC Universe app, otherwise I'd watch it a day earlier. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a good one. It, it, it sets up Our Man and um, uh, Doctor Midnight, so it's a good one. I'm so excited. Uh, before we get started, I have something I'd like to share with you that uh -huh. I... Uh, made especially just for you oh wow that's great <laughs> wow that's really cool <laughs> nice thank you i spent all night working on it just for you <laughs> oh that's incredible Belle. thank you you're welcome and uh, i told craig i would send it to you at his uh at his address okay that'd be lovely yeah thank you uh i have all these uh Star girl questions, and if there's anything I'm not allowed to ask you, please let me know. <laughs> okay, I will do. Yeah, let's um, just jump straight in. How did you end up getting the role of Icicle? What did, what made the producer like you so much? Um, it was Jeff Johns. I've, I've been friends with Jeff Johns, who created the show. I've been friends with him for 15 years. And so um, he just called me up in January last year and just said, hey, do you want to do this show? We've, we've got a live-action version of Stargirl, and I'd love you to play uh, Icicle. So... Um, I've known Jeff for a while, and I knew this was a big pet project for him, and so I um, jumped on board. How did you know Jeff? We did a TV series uh, 15 or 16 years ago called Blade the Series, which was a TV adaptation of the Blade movies. Did the TV show? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It only got one season. It's amazing. Oh, I'll have to check it out. I had no idea. I loved the movies. I had no idea there was a show. <laughs> Yeah, they did a TV show. I only got one season. I kind of think that it was a little ahead of its time. If that came out now, it would have run for six, seven seasons. But mm -hmm. um, there was only one superhero TV show at the time, and that was Smallville. So people mm -hmm. didn't think that people wanted to watch superhero shows on TV. I would have at the time. <laughs> yeah, so I think it was just ahead of its time, right? Yeah. And what do you remember from your first day on the set? And what is working on the set like? Um... That's a good question. First day on set, you know what I remember? I remember for my first day actually being on set. It wasn't working, but I turned up. I was, I was shooting another film in London at the time um, and uh, flew over and just had two days to be there for costume fittings and uh, makeup tests and everything before I flew back to do the, the carry on with the film. And I remember I, uh, I walked into the makeup trailer and um, there was this little blonde girl sitting there with her curly hair and... <laughs> And uh, I walked in and she went, hi. I was like, hey, how you doing? And she went, oh, my God, are you Icicle? And I was like, yeah, yep, yeah, I'm Neil. I'm, I'm playing Icicle. She went, oh, I'm Breck. It's like breakfast, but we're just without the fist. <laughs> and I was like, she is so adorable. And the moment I met Breck, I was like, oh, the show's going to work because she is Stargirl. You know, she's so perfect for it, this little ray of sunshine. She definitely is so perfect for the role. I got the comic book that Jeff wrote. And I'm, I, it looked like I was reading Brett and watching her on the show as well. So, yeah. Um, how did you prepare for the role of Icicle? Did you uh, read any of the comics or watch any of the other? I looked at a lot of the comics. Yeah, I, I, I looked at some of the comics and the other iterations that have been done. But this version is so different. The version that Jeff created in this show is so different to anything that's appeared in the comics or on screen before. So we just talked about how to make this one as definitive as possible. We wanted to stamp our own mark on it. And for me, a big part of that was leaning into the sadness. Um, that backstory that we got to see in episode mm -hmm. three kind of sets everything up with how sad he is. Yeah. At the death of his wife and, well, essentially the murder of his wife at the hands of these companies. And he, um, I wanted to put that sadness through everything. He's, he's not... Um, he doesn't want to do this. He doesn't want to hurt people. He doesn't want to burn the world down. Yeah. He just wants to make the world a better place and believes that he has to make these big, hard decisions in order to do it. But he doesn't take joy in it. Yeah. When I uh, watch his backstory, um, when we see him on his wife's deathbed, he almost seemed like he was human compared to a, a villain that we don't usually get to see in most DC villains. Uh, what yeah. was it like preparing for that element of the character? 
I loved it. I mean, um, it is. It's, it's the kind of before and after. That that moment is the thing that turns him into Icicle. Um, he has the powers before then, but he doesn't really use them. He, it's just something that he has. But the moment Christine dies, it rips him apart. And uh, it was beautiful to play that scene because that, cause, I mean, that scene is just so fraught with so much emotion. I mean, I just... It's one of those things that I feel scenes like that, I don't need to prepare for it. So it's allowing myself to exist in the moment that's been created by the script. And if I am able to commit to it completely and let myself feel what that would be like, I mean, it, just the very idea of standing there with my young son and walking him into the bedroom to see his mother for the last time makes me want to cry already. It's yeah. so, it's so painful. So, if I'd have done lots of intellectual work about I want to feel this, it would have it would have kind of squashed those emotions. Mm-hmm. It was more important just to learn my lines and then feel the emotions of the scene while I was going through it. And thankfully, um, little Roger, who played my son in it, it was just incredible and gorgeous. And and the girl who played Christine, I'm blanking on her name, sorry, but she was incredible as well. And we just we just lived in that for several hours. It was really emotional to watch. And uh, when do you think that Icicle's mission is completely clouding uh, any humanity that he has? Or do you think he feels remorse for some of his actions? I think that he, he, he feels remorse for his actions only in that he wishes he didn't have to do it. I mean, several people have asked me, obviously, about the death of Joey and, yeah. and the wizard. And um, he doesn't want to kill a, a kid. He doesn't want to kill a father. He doesn't want to kill anybody. The only people he actually wants to kill are the people that are indirectly and directly responsible for the death of his wife. Yeah. But he has this mission, and his mission is bigger than any one person. Um, they haven't fully kind of established his mission. I think that comes in episode six. Um, but he wants to make the world a better place. And if he has to remove a couple of people in order to do that, and unfortunately, Joey, Joey just happened, the way I see it is that Joey just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. Star Girl, Star Girl is this fly, fly in the ointment that um, is threatening his plan. And he wants to give a message to her and say, if you want to play in this world there are consequences Mm -hmm. and i will always take it further than you will exactly so he's kind of telling her to back off (laughs) and and you're doing a pretty good job telling that to uh brex star girl yeah so i think he he definitely has remorse but the 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 overarching plan is more important and this isn't the first time we've seen icicle in the uh, arrowverse or the dc tv shows but Stargirl has a very different take on the character. He's a lot more menacing, in a sense. Um, how did your version of the character came to be? What did you enjoy most about setting up your version of the character? What I, what I liked most is leaning into the sadness. Once I knew, when, when Jeff called me on the phone in January last year and said he offered me the role, and then on the phone he kind of pitched me the character and talked about who he was and the backstory and everything. Then I read the scripts, and then I started doing a little work. I love the idea of just leaning into that pain. Like, I I talked to Jeff about colors, and obviously the color for this character is blue. Yeah. You know, he's he's, he's ice, he's he's cold. But I said, let's lean into the idea of that blue as well, because blue is sadness. Mm -hmm. And if if we paint every scene, performance-wise, with this blue sadness it will give this weight to it and a good touchstone for me was thanos from you know from the marvel um cinematic universe and from um um, from the avengers series i don't think that thanos takes joy in clicking his finger and destroying 50 percent of the universe i don't think that's what he wants to do what he wants he takes joy in it what he wants to do is he believes that by doing this everybody who survives will have a better life. And it's the same as Jordan. He doesn't take joy in killing these people and doing this stuff. He believes that the people who survive what he's about to do 
mm-hmm. will have a better life. So the joy for me was just putting this weight on him. Like he's not he's not walking into the ISA meetings and just like, all right, what are we going to do today? He's just mm-hmm. like, it's a necessary evil. And kind of really grounding him in that feeling of sadness was really interesting to play. I couldn't believe the similarities between Thanos and Icicle, and yet they're from two different universes doing something mm. similar. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you got that. <laughs> and uh, for the makeup, how did the makeup process work for turning you into Icicle? Um, well, I saw two things with that. The makeup process for uh, Jordan is we, um, they just, they, they, they talked about um, going with white hair. We talked about um, bleaching my hair completely and going fully white, and we said that, that that's too far. It, it makes him look like a a, um, a pantomime villain as opposed to a, um, a a grounded. He's a real person. Mm-hmm. But we they did add highlights into my hair, so um, I made my hair a lot blonder. So again, leaning into the sort of the frostiness of him, mm-hmm. but. Um, the, I mean, the CG for the character, I mean, it's as simple as they put dots on my face. And uh, when he's icicle, the um, the amazing people over at the visual effects turn him into uh, this this character. And we can't remember if it's episode six or seven is the first time we see him transform. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see that because we've seen him as icicle and we've seen him as Jordan. I can't wait to see him transform into icicle. Um, that one's going to be a really fun one to watch. I look forward to that. I definitely love all the CG work that the show has done, and not just Star Girl, but for all of its shows for the DC yeah. universe. It's just beautiful work that they've yeah, done. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And um, I got a couple more questions. Um, is there any particular experience or scene that you've done on Star Girl that stood out to you as a memorable, a memorable moment? Or something that you've really done that you just love being on the show? And what was it like working with the cast and the crew in those scenes? Um, one moment that really stands out for me is the first time that we see Dragon King. Um, Dragon King, played by Nelson Lee, he's a dear friend of mine. and He was in the Blade, the series that we did 15 years ago. So Jeff wrote Blade, the series. Nelson was also in it, and I was in it. So the very first scene that Nelson was on set was the scene with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and he walked. I mean, I've been dear friends, one of my best friends. We've been dear friends with him ever since Blade. But this is the first time that we've worked together since Blade. <laughs> and so I walked onto the set, and it was just me and him. Um, gave him a hug, and we kind of teared up. And then Jeff walked in, and was like, "Hey, reunion!" <laughs> and uh, we all had a hug, and we were like, "This is this is incredible that we get to do this again after 15 years." So that was a really beautiful moment for me. That must have been quite a reunion to see everyone yeah. after all these years. Yeah, it was gorgeous. Um, you got to work with such wonderful actors on the set. What did you learn by working with them? I learned a lot from different people. I mean, it's there's. Uh, I've been a big fan of... Um, Luke Wilson's for a while and um, watching Luke we only have a few scenes together but watching Luke he really minds the scene and what I mean by that is he really digs into every moment and he wants to make every moment work and he's not satisfied until he feels like he's mined it completely and there's nothing left to mine right. and he was constantly would do a scene and then he constantly kind of make scribbles on the thing and he talked to Jeff and he come back and he changed a couple of words that either made it funnier or uh, more emotional. And then they'd call cut and it'd be like, and then it changed one word and moved his inflection, which kind of affected something else. So just that sort of professionalism of really crafting is something that I've always had, but it's fun to see it in somebody else and, and get um, become re-enthused by their, um, their professionalism and their passion. That's really amazing. Um, do you have a favorite DC Comics character other than your version of Icicle? I always love Solomon Grundy. I thought Solomon Grundy is an amazing character. And when uh, Jeff told me that Solomon Grundy was going to be in this, um, I did a little sort of giddy laugh because I, I just think Solomon Grundy is such a fascinating character. And if we get a season two, 
And between you and me, wink, wink, we're going to get a season two. There's no way they're not going to... It's not official. Nobody's announced anything. <laughs> but, but with the show doing so well, I mean, I think we're holding 90% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes and the numbers have held. There's no way we don't get a second season. So I'm, we're all kind of waiting for somebody to announce that. I've heard what they're going to do with Solomon Grundy in season two. And Solomon Grundy in season two, they dig into who he is, as opposed to him just being this beast that just destroys stuff. Mm -hmm. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> they, um, they explore the character a little more, and I'm really excited to see that. And I really hope the show gets a season two. I think Stargirl is one of the best shows for superheroes I've seen in a long time. I mean, I watched yeah. every single superhero show it was ever made, and I've never seen anything like Stargirl before. Oh, amazing! I'm, a brand I'm glad new you fan, like it too. I never, I didn't know who Star Girl was until the announcement. Yeah. So I'm pretty excited to see more episodes, and I'm really hoping there's another season. So I'm wishing you yeah, and everyone me too. the best. Thank you. Uh, one more question: Are you currently working on any new projects? I'm currently working on what it's like to be in lockdown. So <laughs> yeah. I'm not working on anything. No, nobody is. I mean, I. Before we went into lockdown, I had a, f a feature film that I had written that I'm going to direct. Um, and we were looking to shoot that in the fall of this year. And now because of COVID, that's going to be pushed until the spring of next year. So um, that's something I'm really looking forward to. But um, I'm waiting until the cloud of COVID passes and yeah. the world opens back up. And we'll see what it looks like when it does. But nothing on the horizon. Well, I wish you the best on your film. And I definitely Thank you, hope COVID disappears soon. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I had such a fun time talking to you. Yeah, it was lovely talking to you too. Um, best of luck with everything. If I can help with anything else, please let me know. I will. And uh, you have a, a great day. And uh, I look Belle. forward to tonight's episode. Okay. Uh, Enjoy. I'll talk to you later, Neil. You too. Bye. Bye.